Toward more inclusive metrics and open science to measure research assessment in earth and natural sciences. Written by Olivier Porret, Dasapta Erwin Irawan, Najme Shake, Eleonora van Richingen, and Loni Besankon. It will never possible to harmoniously implement open science without a universal consensus on a new way of evaluating research and researchers. Bernard Rentier Introductions The conventional assessment of scientists relies on a set of metrics which are mostly based on the production of scientific articles and their citations. These metrics are primarily established at the journal level, like the impact factor, the article level, like time cited, and the author level, for instance, age index. These metrics form the basis of criteria that have been widely used to measure institutional reputations, as well as that of authors and research groups. By relying mostly on citations, however, they are inherently flawed in that they provide only a limited picture of scholarly productions. Indeed, citations only count documents used within scholarly works, and thus provide a very limited view of the use and impact of an article. Those reveal only the superficial dimensions of a research impact on society. Even within academia, citations are limited since the link they express does not hold any value. As an example, one could be cited for the robustness of the presented work while the other could be cited for its main limitations. As such, two articles could be cited the same number of times for very different reasons and relying on citations to evaluate scientific work therefore displays obvious limitations. Beyond this issue, however, the conventional assessment of scientists is clearly beneficial to some scientists more than others and does not reflect or encourage the dissemination of knowledge back to the public that is ultimately paying scientists. This is visible in earth and natural sciences, which has been organized to solve local community problems in dealing with the earth system like groundwater hazards. Sadly, results of the conducted research rarely reach the public and dissemination often relies on volunteers' efforts from scientists. The efforts bear close to no weight in current scientific evaluation practices. The problem is even more present for scientists from Global South and or non-English speaking countries. They carry heavier burdens of producing bilingual materials. One peer-reviewed articles in index-reputable journals using high-standard English to satisfy current assessment methods and two community outreach and engagement using local language to perform their responsibility to society. However, the latter activity frequently lies on the bottom of their list given the already high workload necessary to publish peer-reviewed articles. This can be clearly observed by looking at the campaign launched by Asian and African universities showcasing their achievement in the world-class university game. All publications are strongly encouraged to be written in English language and assessments follow those typical drafted by and beneficially for Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic nations. Figure 1 
It's the sketch note, the wall of metric by Dasapta Erwin Irawan to showcase the small playground of researchers or scientists that is filled with self-centered indicators. The limitations of traditional research assessment have been thoroughly demonstrated by scholars advocating for open science. They argue that our focus on citations and articles is both unfair and giving incentives for quantity over quality. Open science is not unified ideology, but a diverse set of principles practices and goals. Equity is often stated as a core aim of open science practice, but just because things are open will not necessarily ensure equity. Indeed, many factors like region, gender, discipline, and access to resources will continue to shape the possibilities of participation in an open science world. Public have been connecting open science only with open access journal publishing system with article processing charts or APC. Moreover, open access journal with APC, which mostly run by for-profit publishers, have gotten have often been set as the standards of quality in open access publishing especially in the Southeast Asia and also other regions. The question of how to fairly evaluate researchers using open science perspectives, however, remain a hot topic. Indeed, although open science aims to make all stages of research process, including evaluation, open and transparent, its limited role is an issue of practical implementations, a kind of challenge. Current challenges Beyond the limitations of the adopted metric-based evaluation of scientists, academia faces important and rising challenges that research assessments method should consider. First, A significant barrier to greater engagement among scientists and researchers with stakeholders and community members is the persistent academic standard that productivity and impact be judged primarily by their production of journal articles. Incentives for researchers to share their findings more broadly to policymakers industry or involve society in the process of research are generally quite limited and often not provided by funding agencies. There are funding programs whose evaluation criteria include dissemination, but some do not. There is a strong reason for this difference. Not all frontier science is easily accessible or immediately relevant to the public. Second, for science communication to be successful, professionals are required. Often it would be too much, if not possible, to ask fundamental science researchers to engage in science communications, at least with a significant level of success. One could ask whether the role of science communicators deserves to become more established. But who should be in charge of such coordination and funding? The third, funding agencies do some communication activities, but not in a structured manner as to follow regular updates on specific topics. Choices for featuring stories often fall on hot topics like global warming. This lack of a clear dissemination strategy results in many research findings and data remaining undelivered and untranslated and therefore inaccessible to policymakers, stakeholders, and the general public. Time, effort, and costs of publishing datasets engaging the public and communicating findings are proportionally greater for small projects, 
institutions or research teams, putting even greater demands on these groups to achieve integrated, open, and networked science. The fifth, a solution to this would be the use of alternative metrics, for example, alt metrics or social metrics derived from research data dissemination and social outreach. The metric tight report makes some proposals for alternatives to the impact factor. The sixth, aside to those challenges mentioned above, another critically important yet often dis- re- disregarded factor is the need for diversity in team composition. Representation among different genders, backgrounds, nationalities, and career stages can expand perspectives in a project. The system is now designed in such a way that it recognizes only one type of excellent scientist, the one with a high publication rate. Early careers and promising scientists who do not recognize themselves in that profile might leave academia for that reason, leading to a loss of talent. A better definition of the various profiles or career paths of scientists will attract more diverse talents as proposed in the Netherlands. Room is now being created for academics to include what they feel their strengths are and to focus on what matters most in their field. Academics will be given more opportunity to present their quality, content, academic integrity, creativity, and contributions to society. And then followed by European Open Science Conference held in Paris early February 2022, and the Paris call on research assessment also in 2022. The future decision to introduce new ways of recognizing and rewarding academics does not mean that the quality of research will be lower. In contrast, it is a positive choice for more team science to promote multidisciplinarity where one team member can be good at research, another at making an impact, and yet another at teaching. The team will benefit collectively. Local scientists and non-scientists can be great assets to projects, bringing valuable contextual information. However, even researchers wish to engage communities and stakeholders the approach taken can thwart community engagement efforts. Further, non-scientists are often dismissed by researchers, leading to disengagement by individuals who may bring great value to an effort. One factor that the science community must take into consideration is the collaboration between professional scientist and society. Such collaboration is a two-way process which will empower non-scientists to play a role in research activity and produce improvements and make discoveries which will be of benefit to both parties. Scientific journals and databases are less accessible to general public and outreach is an effort to translate, simplify, and convey new scientific knowledge with the wider public community. Science communications in multiple non-English languages is also crucial for effective dissemination of scientific ideas. However, journalists who have taken the role of science dissemination have a different educational background than scientists, resulting in difficult communication between them and potentially misinformation of the public. Therefore, we need a shift in the roles of both scientists and journalists. 
Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic that limits physical interactions has proven that conducting research in traditional closed mode with articles published behind paywalls also limits the collaboration and effectiveness of research development. But beyond this, it highlighted the crucial importance of fast knowledge disseminations, sometimes at the risk of misinterpreting. And community provided peer review outside of traditional publishing and reviewing models, none of which are usual rewarded or considered by traditional scientific evaluation paradigm. Peer reviewers should not act as gatekeepers of science. Instead, they could take the role as the nurturers of science. Overall, it does seem that limitations of scientific evaluation are clearly apparent in all of the aforementioned challenges. None of these challenges are new and open science advocates have for long argued toward a radical change in scientific evaluations. It remains however disputed how scientific assessment should be undertaken in the future.